Okay, we'll start with the Mustard R43, size 10, dry fly hook. This is the Sasquatch, or the Bigfoot. What we need now is some rubber gloves. Take one of the fingers, I like to use the little finger, and we just cut that off like that. So we take, cut the finger out, then we take our dubbing needle and we make a hole through the tip, and we take our bobbin and we find the hole like there, if you can see that. And we push our bobbin through, push the finger down, pull our tying thread through. You'll see why later. So we'll just attach our tying thread. We want to cover the whole hook shank with the tying thread because we don't want the deer hair slipping. So we'll go back to that and just remove that. And it's a very interesting pattern. It's a George Leonard Herter pattern from the 60s. Uh, I believe he was a tackle shop owner in the United States and fly designer. Now we want chinchilla marabou. This I've taken from a game bird. So go back a little bit more. And we want quite a long tail on this. It's interesting using marabou as a tail on a dry fly, but that's the recipe. I go back a wee ways. That's good. And then what we want to do is go forward. Just tie that marabou down to the hook shank because that will help us secure the deer hair. And go back to there. I'm going to remove that. That's excellent. So we mark our position now for where we're going to finish with the deer hair later with our tying thread and then we can go back to the tail base right into the tail there and then we take a small bunch of stacked and cleaned deer hair and what we do is we'll spin our tying thread anti-clockwise to flatten it and we'll go once around tighten up a little bit this will spread it around the hook shank and then we we'll go around again and tighten up so we get that little flared deer hair tail and then we can just go through the deer hair carefully a couple of times and what we want to do is pull all this back it's a little bit fiddly we'll go through that's it and then I can work my tying thread up to the position we marked with our tying thread earlier to there. And then what we do is we pull all this forward again. We want to get it around, distributed around the whole hook shank. We bring it all forward. Try and get it nice and tight so you get a nice slender body and keep the hairs straight. So then we can come up and again we make one turn, another turn, and then we can pull that hair, tighten in, and have it flare. And again, carefully go through the hair 
to stop it spinning. That's looking good, like so. Then what we do is we pull all this forward. We want this hair to make a collar. We pull it all forward. And trim it off like so. Then we can move our hair back. We take our rubber glove finger and just move my tine thread to the front of the hook, behind the hook eye like so, and then we take our rubber glove finger and we pull that up and bring it finding the hole again it's not very easy to see from where I am sitting and filming there we are and we pull our rubber glove back over the deer hair collar so we can keep it out of the way and move our tine thread tight up into the deer hair collar a little bit of wax on my Dyneema and then we take our ankle in, go forward and then we can remove that stem so it doesn't overshoot the eye like so. And then what we can do, take our scissors come this way and go in there and we remove the rubber glove tip and we can come in with our hackle and we'll wind this on Three turns behind, one in front. Remove the hackle. Take our whip finisher. Give it one more. And remove the tine thread. <laughs> and that's the finished Sasquatch. Now it doesn't <laughs> represent anything that I can think of, but it's a skating pattern. Apparently, I must be honest, I've not fished it, but I thought it a very interesting pattern to tie. Uh, and apparently it fishes absolutely beautifully so please try and give it a go if you enjoy the videos please like share and subscribe thanks for watching